looks at the solar system. We're going to do a quick run through of the eight planets in our solar system and also talk about what it means to be a planet. So let's get started. First thing is a definition of what it means to be a planet. So to be a planet, you have to meet all three of these criteria. You have to orbit the star, but not be a star yourself. Right? There are some star systems where there are actually two stars that orbit each other. Neither of them would be considered a planet. So an object has to orbit a star, but not be a star. It has to be large enough for its own gravity to pull it into a round shape. Right? So it turns out, and we'll talk about this a little bit more in class, but when objects get really huge, the, their gravity that pulls them together is able to pull them into a round shape rather than a, a funky, maybe like potato shape. Right, so some asteroids that orbit our star and orbit the sun aren't big enough to be pulled into a round shape. They kind of look like potatoes or other funky shapes. So they're not planets. And the object must have cleared its orbit of other objects. Right, so it has to be the only thing in its orbit. Right? Other stuff may cross the orbit, right? but this has to be the only object following its path around the sun. Right, and you have to meet all three criteria. And it turns out that Pluto misses the third. All right, there are other objects that share Pluto's orbit with it. So it's not the only thing in its orbit, on its path around the sun. There are other things that share that path. The Earth is the only thing on its path. Right, Even though we have our moon, the moon orbits us. So it can't be considered a planet because the moon isn't orbiting a star, right? It's orbiting another planet. So those are the rules to be a planet. So we're going to look at the eight planets quickly, all right? Starting with the inner planets. So we kind of roughly divide the solar system into inner and outer planets, and we'll see that they have some things in common. So our inner planet, inner planets are first. Bullets back on. All right, the closest is Mercury. All right, it's a rocky planet. And it's small, and it looks kind of like the moon. There's no atmosphere, all right? It's just, you can see all these craters on it. It's very close to the sun. It orbits really quickly, all right? And it's really, really hot in the sun and really, really cold in the shade, all right? There's no atmosphere, all right? That's really all we need to know about Mercury. We're just doing a quick overview of each planet. So the next planet after Mercury is... Venus. All right. Venus is another rocky planet. All right. It's about the size of Earth. And it has very dense clouds of sulfur, sulfuric acid, and carbon dioxide. So needless to say, this planet would be not a very fun place to live. All right. The carbon dioxide creates a huge greenhouse effect. And so Venus is actually the hottest planet in our solar system. We get temperatures over 475 degrees Celsius. That's almost 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so Venus is very, very hot because of its atmosphere of carbon dioxide. So about the same size of Earth, but not a fun place to live. Our next planet is, of course, our home, Earth. All right. It's considered a rocky planet, all right? Even though there's oceans on the Earth, the main Earth itself is rock. And so that's why we consider it a rocky planet. It's the only planet with liquid water and life that we know of. All right, it's the only planet in our solar system, for sure, that has liquid water and life. Uh, there may be planets around other stars, but we're going to focus on our star today. So Earth, rocky planet, only planet with liquid water and life. And the last of the inner planets is Mars. All right. it has a, it's a rocky planet, and it has a lot of iron oxide or rust in the soil, makes it look red. Right. 
and this is probably the planet that's been best explored by humans. We've sent, we haven't sent people there, but we've sent a lot of different rovers to Mars. All right, this one, this is the Spirit and Opportunity rovers. They've been there for about close to 10 years now doing science on Mars. And this is the new rover in the left, Curiosity. It's about the size of an SUV, all right? And it's got a little nuclear power plant on it. And it is going to be up there for about 10 to 12 years doing research and collecting soil samples and analyzing them on board. So we're able to send stuff to Mars. We haven't sent people there yet. It's way too expensive. So you'll notice all the inner planets, what do they all have in common? They are all rocky. So the inner planets are all rocky. All right. So we leave Mars behind and we head out into the outer planets. All right. And so into the outer part of our solar system. And we're going to start with Jupiter as the first outer planet. All right, we've sent two space probes past Jupiter. All right, this is a gas, what we call a gas giant. So there's no solid surface to Jupiter. The whole planet itself is just a giant ball of gas. All right, there's still enough gravity, right? Gas still has mass, so it still has gravity to pull itself together. All right, so it's a gas giant. It's the largest planet, and it's mostly hydrogen and helium. Right? These are lighter materials, so we'll see when the solar system formed, this stuff kind of got left out farther away from the sun, whereas the heavy rocky stuff got pulled in closer to the sun. So oops, Jupiter is the fifth planet, and it's the largest planet. All right? It's got a ton of moons. All right? We'll talk about these a little bit in class. You're not going to be responsible for knowing any of these on the quiz or the test, but it's kind of cool. It's got a whole bunch of different moons, some of which are almost the size of Earth. So um, some of them have ice on them, have active volcanoes. It's a pretty cool place. Our next planet is Saturn. All right, and Saturn is also a gas giant, mostly hydrogen and helium. All right, and its rings are made up of small particles of ice, rock, and dust that are orbiting the planets. You can think of it as a moon that never really formed. So instead of all of this material combining together to form a moon that would orbit Saturn, these rings are just a bunch of rock and ice and dust that all each little particle orbits Saturn on its own. And so all these little particles together have a ring appearance. Right? And we sent the two Voyager probes past Saturn they reached it in 1980 and 1981. All right, Saturn has those rings, like we said. It has about 31 moons. All right, its largest moon is bigger than Mercury, but again, it can't be considered a planet because it's not orbiting a star. Next up is Uranus. All right, it's the seventh planet. It's another gas giant. All right, and it is made up of hydrogen, helium, and methane, which gives it a bluish color. All right, so that gives it a bluish color. And the cool thing about Uranus is that it orbits on it, it rotates on its side. So something happened, something maybe hit Uranus at some point, that literally hit with such force that it knocked the planet on its side. So it, this planet actually rotates on its side. All right, so whereas Earth would spin Around this way, Uranus spins on its side, which is kind of cool. And then our last planet, farthest from the sun, is Neptune. All right, it's another gas giant. All right, again, hydrogen, helium, and methane. All right, so it's kind of purplish in color. All right, and it's the eighth planet from the sun. And we didn't reach this until almost the 1990s with a spacecraft that had been launched in the 1970s. So that kind of gives you an idea of how far away Neptune is. All right. So if you notice, all of the outer planets, one thing they have in common, they are all gas giants. So none of these outer planets have a solid surface. If you were to try and step on one, you would just fall into the planet. And we've actually done that with uh, Jupiter. We've sent a probe down into Jupiter 
Eventually the pressure gets so great that it crushed the probe, but we got a lot of cool science about what the inside of Jupiter was like. So if you tried to step on it, you would just fall, 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 fall until the pressure crushed you, and that wouldn't be very fun. So we're not going to try and walk on these planets. Make sure you write a summary on your notes. Don't forget to write your summary. Don't just leave it blank with the notes that are here. Write a summary at the bottom. Fill out the survey, and I will see you in class tomorrow.